So now I have some comparisons of the performance of these methods, regardless of whether or not they use modularity. So for this sort of uh, comparison, what we're going to do is to create synthetic data with ground truth. So we create random graphs. There's, there's this type of random graphs called ABCD. Actually, this is also developed in Toronto uh, at, uh, at Ryerson University. Um, so these ABCD graphs are uh, random graphs that have ground truth community built into them. So in the generation of these random graphs, first each node has a community assigned to it, and then the edges are formed based on the communities, such that most of the edges are created between nodes of the same community. Right? So we have nodes with labels, essentially. And then we create edges such that most of the edges are between nodes of the same label. So this is where we're kind of moving from unsupervised learning and kind of doing some supervised learning tricks because the clusters are available in this simulated setting. And then when the graph is created, we remove the labels. We give the graph with no labels to any algorithm that is for community detection. We let it find the partition and then measure the similarity between the partition they find and the ground truth partition. If an algorithm can find the ground truth partition where no information is stored about them, then it means that the algorithm is doing a good job. And also, we have a measure of noise. So for example, for this ABC model, they have this parameter of C, which is the amount of noise. So uh, it's called the mixing parameter. It's essentially the amount of noise in the data generation process. You can create 90% uh, of the edges you create between nodes of the same label and only 10% between nodes of different labels, so that the topology doesn't show you the clusters immediately but it would be about separating noise from signal to be able to successfully find the clusters, right? And you can increase this amount of noise to any level. And then an algorithm that has a good performance across different levels of noise would be a suitable algorithm. Um, and then the performance measure would be something like AMI, adjusted mutual information, that we measure based on the partition from an algorithm and the ground truth partition. If an algorithm retrieves the ground truth perfectly, it's, it's great. But that almost never happens. If you have a network with hundreds of nodes, each node has k possibilities, because we're not talking about two groups anymore. We're talking about k groups. Each node has k possibilities. Let's say k is 20. You have 20 to the power of 300 nodes. So there are these many solutions. If an algorithm finds the right solution, if it retrieves the ground truth perfectly, it's really remarkable. Right? But even if it returns something that is close to it, meaning that the AMI between the partition and that is relatively high, it means it has a good performance. And these are the comparison of all the algorithms. Again, this, uh, yeah, I colored the algorithm we developed in blue and the other ones in different scales of gray. And you can see how they perform um, compared to each other. So on the y-axis, I have ranks of these algorithms based on average AMIs. On the x-axis, I have the amount of noise in the data generation process. So there are some algorithms that are excellent as long as we don't have, uh, as long as we don't have noise. Um, I guess we don't see it in here, um, but yeah, for example, this one, LN, is the third best algorithm, but you can see that it becomes worse and worse relatively when we increase the noise. Uh, then, then here, actually, it becomes better. So for, for the algorithm we developed, it works like this. It's the second best if noise is very small, then it's the best, the best, second best, and then if noise is very large, its performance is not that good. But this is where noise is huge. Noise is 90%. You had a question? Yeah. So here we're, we're working based on simulated data. So we generate random graphs through a process. The process is called ABCD. It is a, it is a process developed in, at Ryerson University. And um, this, is, this gives you a benchmark graph for comparing community detection algorithms. Because in that benchmark graph, you have ground truth communities. There, there's a partition for that graph. This is the graph. This is what the algorithm sees, right? The, graph do, the algorithm doesn't, doesn't see the ground truth partition. But there is a ground truth partition that is, let's say, 0, 2, 1, and 4 and 3, for whatever reason. This is the ground truth. The algorithm doesn't have access to this. The algorithm only sees the topology. If it manages to retrieve something like this from the topology, it means it's a good algorithm. Because we generated the graph based on this ground truth. So we created uh, 500 random graphs. Yeah. We have yeah. So for, for 100 of them, I just used 10% noise. Then I, had 10, then I had 100 test case with low amount of noise. Then I created another 100 graphs with 30% noise. And I used those as test cases. Then I generated 100 other graphs based on 50% noise. Noise is something that I can, I can change in the, in the graph generation process. 
All right. Then, of course, there would be a conflict of interest because people would tell me, oh, you know these people at Ryerson University. The test cases you're using is from people from your own city. So maybe you colluded with them. So this is another, another um, benchmark model. Um, this is from Indiana University. And um, again, it allows us to generate random benchmarks with different amounts of noise. Um, and we can, we can compare algorithms based on these test cases. And this is separate from the previous assessment. So we, we do two different assessments so that if an algorithm is doing a good job in both of them, maybe it means that it's a good algorithm. But really, this question of whether an algorithm is good or not is really controversial. You know, I show these results, but not everyone would agree on them. So this is based on LFR benchmarks. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you. Solving this optimization problem, back to Junda's question, solving the optimization problem is not, is not the whole thing. So this Paris algorithm is excellent on LFR graphs as long as noise is very small. But when we introduce noise, Paris algorithm suddenly becomes one of the worst algorithms in terms of performance. When we increase noise from 1% to 10%. Then Paris is here, then here, then here. So I told you to remember names of a couple of algorithms. So Combo is, is uh, relatively good. It's here. Um, and our algorithm is in blue. It's, it has a pretty, pretty good performance. It's never the, the very best, but the very best changes depending on the noise. So we are the third best or the second best, but we have a, a kind of a, a stable performance. Yes. Oh, this is not AMI. This is rank of algorithms. Very good question. Rank of algorithms in average AMI. So average AMI actually decreases when we increase noise. But, uh, but there's a limit to, to how large AMI can get. So the, the values of AMI for all of these algorithms change like this, uh, change like this. But what I'm plotting in here is the ranking. Because there could be one line that is, I mean, the plot of AMI would be very difficult to read. Everything will be almost on top of each other. But there could be one algorithm that is almost always the best or second best or third base. And there could be an algorithm that is here, almost always the worst algorithm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we need to consider variations into account. And for that, actually, I did some statistical tests. So I, I, I ran some statistical tests that compare the performance of these algorithms. And then why an algorithm is statistically significantly better than, let's say, everything in here. Everything below this line, we are statistically significantly better than it. And then these ones, we are on average better than them. Uh, but the results are not significant. So we cannot claim that we are better than them. Um, but the thing is, these two regions are not where the algorithms exist. Most of these algorithms, some of their performance is in region 1. Some of them are in region 2. So pretty much each other, it, any other algorithm, we statistically significantly outperform it somewhere, if not everywhere. And then there are also some other algorithms, uh, which you know, from this assessment, we learned that, that they, they have a good performance. For example, this walk trap algorithm is, I guess, from 2004. It's very simple. It's based on random walker. And you can see that it has a pretty, pretty decent performance, especially given that it is from the simple idea of random walk. That's why, I, at least in my own research, I see that simple ideas are good. They sometimes work. I, I see graph neural network and how it's, it, it is terrible for this task and how long it takes. And then I see also random walk idea from 20 years ago and how it is excellent. It's difficult to outperform. Um, that's why also, like, as a general advice, don't, don't always try to use the, you know, the so-called state-of-the-art method. To me, there is no such thing as state-of-the-art method. For any task, there would be um, methods with good performance and methods with bad performance at a certain point in time. So if you're doing community detection, my results suggest that you should use Leiden, Combo. Uh, if your network is large, if your network is small, less than 3,000 edges, use my algorithm. All right, but then these were all based on simulated data. We also have real networks that have ground truth. So these are, for example, this one is Karate Club that I showed you. For Karate Club, we can see how accurately they retrieve the actual way that these um, people form the two groups. And for Karate Club, belief propagation algorithm is actually the best one. But there's a no free lunch theorem in here. No algorithm can be better than everything else for every real network. Because how the topology translates to communities depends on whether you're talking about a biological network of genes, or you're talking about a social network of university club, or you're talking about a network of international relations, or you're talking about a network of securities in, in finance. So you can see that, again, this algorithm has these, these are values of AMI. They are among the largest for each of these networks. And there are also some algorithms that 
just fail all the time. This one is almost always zero. There are algorithms that, uh, again, combo, you can see that it's pretty good, relatively. And then for some of these networks, just the largest AMI is 83%. So actually, 